People are often surprised by how exciting and charming and magnetic narcissists can be. It's almost as if they recognize the red flags around the person they're dealing with. But there's this pool that overpowers the hints of danger that present themselves. And the person goes down the path, which is to to entangle themselves, couple up with, partner up with, with the narcissist. And I guess the question there is, why, why do people so easily find themselves um, falling head over heels, falling deeply for the narcissist, such that they, they feel they can't even resist? And the answer, the answer to that comes down to a couple of things. First of all, narcissists can, can pull off that, that, that charm, that kind of soulmate effect, that magnetism with you. Because, they, first of all, they know you so well. And the reason they know you so well is because they, narcissists are very sensitive and when they pick up on things like what people are feeling, what makes people tick, what makes, you know, people fearful. They, they know these things about you because they test you just a little bit and they get a pretty good feel about, you know, what you're about, what makes you tick, what, what repels you, what attracts you. Um, and then having that information about you, having, knowing you almost as good as you know yourself, or even better in some ways, they, they, they play their cards just right so that you feel very enticed by the feeling of them. You feel very attracted to them. The, the, the aura that they present is just something, it's like a mixture of magnetism, mystery, and just attraction that can overpower your, your senses when it comes to seeing any red flags. So th those two things are quite important. And if you think about it, you might be able to relate to that being A, they read you very well, and then B, they play their cards perfectly such that you find yourself feeling attracted to them. Um, and there's also another component, which is narcissists try really hard to impress you at the beginning. So not only do they read you well and know how to play that against you, but they also put in a lot of effort in a sense that they, narcissists invest in you at the beginning, you know, they, they find you interesting at the beginning when you're still new. And the, and the fact that you are falling for them, the fact that they see they are causing you to fall for them, gives them a lot of supply. So that's why narcissists are so willing to invest in you a lot at the beginning, because they're getting a lot of supply. They're getting a lot of excitement from the fact that you're falling for them. And the, you know, the supply that they get from the excitement and seeing you fall for them is what they recycle into further charming you, further getting you, um, you know, building up your traction to them further. And it kind of, one thing builds on itself. So there's a lot of that happening at the beginning. You know, there's a lot of them investing in you. There's a lot of them putting out, you know, not, not just putting out their best foot, but rather putting out something that's not even their normal persona just to to get the supply from seeing you be charmed by them. And that only really stops, you know, their investment in you, their, their charming nature only really st starts to slow down once they're convinced that they've fully ensnared you, that you've fully fallen for them. Because at the point where you've fully fallen for them, there's, you know, there, there's no more thrill of the chase, there's no more thrill of the hunt, there's no more of, of that challenge behind, you know, as they would see, acquiring you. And it's after that point where they just, they stop idealizing you, they stop love bombing you, and they start reverting to their normal state, which for you is a shock, because their normal state is just somebody very uninteresting, somebody who 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 isn't charming, somebody who isn't energetic, somebody who doesn't have that allure. You know, they only have that when they're when they're engaged in something, you know, for example, the initial love bombing that's that supplies them because there's that feedback loop because, you know, they love bomb you, you start falling for them, and that further supplies them. So they continue the, the, the love bombing and so on. So it's hard to resist narcissists simply because they read you well. They know how to play, you know, the, the, 
the particularities about you, about what makes, you know, about what excites you and what, what causes you to um, be fearful and what, you know, what causes you to hurt and what causes you to, to wonder. The way, the way they play th those feelings against you is sometimes to near perfection. And they just enjoy watching you kind of fall for them in, in, a, in a manipulative type of way. It makes them feel powerful. It makes them feel validated. It makes their ego feel very good. Um, but it's only once there's no more challenge in you because they've actually achieved what they've set out to achieve, which is to get you to fall for them, that they then, um, they don't have the energy left to continue to invest in you. They don't have, they don't see you as exciting anymore, you know. And then the only way they can get excitement from you from that point onwards is to devalue you, is to, is to kind of push pull in a sense that, um, once you're fully into them, they don't think you're interesting enough to really invest in you. But when you start to pull away, or if you if you find that place where you you might be second guessing the narcissist and might think they're no longer inter you're not you might no longer be interested in them, they sometimes sense that, or they usually would sense that. In which case, sometimes they'll they'll start like a low key love bombing campaign towards you again. But it's just one of those things where. Um, you're, you're only seen as having any value, any worth, if you're not, if you haven't fallen for them or if you're not into them. The moment you are into them, they see no value in your eyes. And from that point onwards, you're basically um, just some someone that they might keep around because, you know, you could it could be that you still stroke their ego sometimes, you still supply them some. But it's very, it's, it's not very good supply and to, to spice it up for them, you know, when you're seen as low value in their eyes to spice things up, they have to devalue you. So that's why with narcissistic relationships, things are never going to be as good as they were at the beginning because there's so much happening at the beginning that kind of overwhelms your senses, um, mostly in a positive way. You would have seen some red flags in the love bombing process, but you know because your senses are feeling so good, you so euphoric, you tend to ignore them. But once the initial love bombing is over, the best you can expect for is push pull being um devaluation occasionally mixed with with some you know some doses of love bombing affection um you know positive attention but it's it's it's, it's mostly devaluation once you know once the your shine has worn off once your novelty has worn off once the challenge of you has kind of worn off you're no longer a challenge then at best you can expect for the occasional crumbs of you know of the good stuff but you'll mostly experience devaluation so you do have that kind of push pull happening that hot and cold but it, it leans more towards the negative than the positive and it and it does just get worse and worse over time